Welcome to tutorial 2 on Laplace equation. Problem 1 let d of 0 comma root 2 denote the disc of radius root 2 open disc of radius root 2 and s of 0 root 2 denotes the circle of radius root 2. Consider the Dirichlet boundary value problem Laplace in u equal to 0 in the disc d 0 root 2 and u of x y equal to 1 plus 3 sin 2 theta for x y belongs to s of 0 comma root 2 find u 0 0. If you look at this problem it looks somewhat strange because you are prescribing u of x y and you are not giving a function of x y here you are giving a function of theta. So, usually this is how people may pose sometimes, but then you have to realize that because it is a disc theta is that angle which is coming into the picture and in the background there is uh, r cos theta r sin theta kind of description for the circle x square plus y square equal to r square. So, now how do you find this u of 0 0? One way of course is to find out the solution of this problem and find the value at 0 0, but do we have to do that much? Idea is use mean value property, u is known on the circle, you are asking what is the value of u at the center and precisely the mean value property is what connects both the things. So, u of 0 comma 0 equal to 1 by 2 pi r, here r is root 2, s of 0 root 2 1 plus 3 sin 2 theta into d sigma of x y. We will expand this integral. So, that is equal to 1 by 2 pi root 2 integral from 0 to 2 pi because the angle theta runs from 0 to 2 pi this and root 2 d theta. Therefore, that is nothing but 1 by 2 pi 0 to 2 pi 1 plus 3 sin 2 theta d theta. So, that is equal to 1 by 2 pi. The integral can be split into two integrals namely 0 to 2 pi of d theta plus 0 to 2 pi of 3 sin 2 theta d theta. This is 0 therefore, we get 1 by 2 pi into 2 pi and that is equal to 1. Let us move on to problem 2. Let omega be the complement of the closed unit disc centered at origin that is set of all x y in R 2 such that x square plus y square is greater than or equal to 1. Let u be a c 2 omega intersection c of omega bar function such that Laplace in u is 0 that is u is harmonic in omega and such that limit of u as norm x y goes to infinity is 0. Show that the maximum of modulus u x y as x y varies in omega bar is same as maximum of mod u x y as x y varies in boundary of omega. In other words, we are saying the maximum of mod u or omega bar is attained on the boundary, rather is definitely attained on the boundary of omega. The requirement here suggests application of maximum principle namely the weak maximum principle, but we do not have that on unbounded domains and our omega is unbounded domain. Let us see how to do that. Let us see how to cleverly apply the weak maximum principle and then show what is required in this problem. So, what is the idea to solve this problem? We are given that uh, limit of u is 0 as x y goes to infinity that is this is 0. So, that means that uh, one can make mod u as small as we want. outside a big enough disk. That is for example this and you can you can make module small here. 
So, that will tell us that the supremum of u is meaningful because u is now bounded and then that actually becomes maximum of u inside this region and that is when we plan to apply maximum principles and get the answer. Of course, uh, recall this picture is not exactly correct because we are our domain is complement of the unit disk. Now it is fine. So, the natural choice would then to consider this annular region and apply some kind of maximum principles. So, let us denote this uh, circle by uh, D 0 R this disk and this disk anyway is D 0 1. So, look at this annual region D 0 R minus D 0 1 if you call this omega R. So, we can apply uh, maximum principles and conclude that the the maximum of uh, mod u it can be minimum of u or maximum of u that is attained on the boundary and we conclude that it cannot be this boundary because we have made it very small the r is chosen such that it is small very small here therefore it has to be on this and that is what exactly what we want to show. We will go into the details now. So, since u belongs to c of omega bar and the limit is given to be 0. We have look at modulus of u of x y as x y vary in omega of course, this is a subset of R. This set is bounded set. of course, non empty therefore, it has a supremum. So, let that m denote the supremum. Now, suppose m is 0 then there is nothing to prove if m is 0 it means u itself is 0 therefore, what we are supposed to prove holds automatically that nothing to prove. So, we would as well assume that m is a positive quantity and show what is required namely that maximum of mod u on omega closure is same as maximum of mod u on boundary of omega. Boundary of omega recall is the unit circle. Now, in this case since the limit is 0 limit of u is 0 there exists r positive such that modulus of u of x y we said it can be made as small as I please. So, I will make it less than m by 2 and this will hold for every x y with what property x y is outside the disk of radius r that is for every x y such that norm x y is bigger than or equal to r. So, now we are going to take that r which we have just chosen here by this constraint and then we propose the annular region omega r let us denote this by disk of radius r minus the disk with center 0 radius 1. r satisfies r has the following property that whenever norm x y is bigger than or equal to r mod u x y is less than m by 2 this is the way we have chosen r. Now, let me recall the notation again omega r let us denote this by disk of radius r minus the disk with center 0 radius 1. So, this is an annular region. So, this is disk of radius 1, this is disk of radius r and this is my domain omega r. So, what is the properties now I have on this domain omega r? The value m 
is attained by mod u on omega r. And Laplace in u equal to 0 in this annular region because it is given to be 0 on omega, this is a subset of omega. Therefore, Laplace in u is 0 and u is C2 of omega r intersection C of omega r closure. This is also true. Now, what is this m? m is maximum of mod u over omega r bar also. Therefore, m is either maximum of u on omega r bar or maximum of minus u on omega r bar. Now, by strong maximum principle, of course, we have stated only for strong maxim, maximum principle, we can also state a strong minimum principle. As a consequence, we can deduce that from strong maximum principle. So, that tells us that whether it is minimum or maximum, if it is attained inside the domain, it has to be a constant function. The function u that we are dealing with is not a constant function, we know that because the behavior of u at infinity, we assume that limit of u is 0 at infinity. So, if u had been a constant function, then the function should have been the 0 function, that is the situation when m equal to 0. Now, we are in the case where m is positive, therefore u is not a constant function, therefore the maximum of u or minimum of u is attained only on the boundary of omega r by strong maximum principle or and strong minimum principle. So, m is attained either on the circle of radius r or on the circle of radius 1 that is this or this. But what happens on the circle of radius r? Circle of radius r mod u is strictly less than m by 2. Therefore, m cannot be attained on the circle of radius r. Therefore, m is attained only on the circle of radius 1. That is maximum of mod u or omega bar is equal to maximum of u, u mod u on boundary of omega. Problem 3, let omega be a bounded domain, let u belongs to C to omega intersection C of omega bar be such that Laplace in u equal to minus e power u in omega and u equal to 0 on boundary of omega. Show that u of x is greater than or equal to 0 for all x in omega. So, how to uh, solve this problem? We know nothing about this kind of equations, right? This is actually a nonlinear equation, or if you want to be milder, semi linear equation. But then we have no idea how to handle this. So, we start thinking the other way. Uh, suppose this is not true, u of x is greater than or equal to 0 is not true. It means at some point in omega, u is less than 0. In particular, it means the minimum is going to be a negative number. But here, if you see u is 0 on the boundary, therefore, a minimum of u on omega closure is attained at a point in omega. At points of minimum, what is the Laplacian? Laplacian u has to be greater than or equal to 0. But by this equation, Laplacian u is always less than 0. Therefore, it cannot happen that u is less than 0 at some point. In other words, u is always greater than or equal to 0. We are going to write down the details. As such, this problem is not something to do with the Laplace equation, but the fact that Laplace in u has a certain sign at points of minima or maxima. Since at every point of omega, we have Laplace in u which is equal to minus e power u and that is strictly less than 0, you cannot attain 
minimum of u on omega bar inside omega. The minimum cannot be achieved inside omega that means minimum is achieved only on the boundary of omega. But on the boundary of omega u is 0. So, minimum of u on omega bar is same as minimum of u on boundary of omega but that is 0. But saying that minimum of u on omega bar is 0 is same as saying that u is greater than or equal to 0 for all x in omega. So, this is a problem featuring Laplacian, but the solution needs knowledge of only maxima minima in multivariable calculus. So, problem 4 let p of x y be a polynomial of degree k let u belongs to C 2 of R 2 be such that Laplace in u is 0 that is u is harmonic in R 2 and such that u of x y equal to p of x y for all x y on the unit circle. That means we have a harmonic function in R 2 which equals a prescribed polynomial p on the unit circle. Then show that u itself is a polynomial and polynomial solutions of Laplace in equal to 0 are called harmonic polynomials. We are going to discuss two approaches to solve this problem. The first approach is not successful, but nevertheless we mention the ideas. We think of using mean value property and also the fact that harmonic functions are known to be real analytic functions. Okay, how do we plan to use this idea or why do we think of this idea? We are given that u equal to p on the unit circle, p is a polynomial if p is a polynomial of degree k you know k plus 1 order derivatives of p are 0. So, therefore, we if you think of uh, d alpha u at the origin 0 0 for mod alpha bigger than or equal to k plus 1 by mean value property they will be 0 because mean value property is written in terms of an integral on the circle, but on the circle you have d alpha p whenever alpha is such that mod alpha is bigger than or equal to k plus 1 d alpha p will be 0 because p is a polynomial of degree k. Therefore, we get that d alpha u at 0 0 will be 0 whenever mod alpha is bigger than or equal to k plus 1. And since u is supposed to be real analytic function, I can write the Taylor series expansion at the point 0 0. Of course, this will be a finite expansion. In other words, it is a polynomial, it is not a series it is going to be just polynomial. And then I hope to show that that is a polynomial which we are looking for. Let us see what are the problems in this approach. So, let me just write uh, what is the idea mean value property and real analyticity. of harmonic function. So, mean value property gives us that d alpha u at 0 0 equal to 1 by 2 pi integral on the unit circle d alpha u at x y d omega of x y that is nothing but 1 by 2 pi s of 0 1 d alpha, but on the unit circle u equal to p therefore, it is d alpha p of x y d omega of x 1. This is true for all alpha that is mod alpha greater than or equal to 0. But since p is a polynomial of degree k whenever mod alpha is bigger than or equal to k plus 1 we get d alpha u at 0 0 is 0 because d alpha p is 0. So, writing down the Taylor series what we get is u of 0 0 I will write only a few terms dou by dou x at the point 0 0 into x dou by dou y at the point 0 0 into y plus second order derivatives d 
zero x to y this will come back to at zero zero x y plus dou two u by dou y square y square into one by two and so on. So, if you want to understand the Taylor series, you can consult any book on multivariable calculus, in particular the book of Bartle or Rudin. Rudin's book on mathematical analysis and Bartle's book on elements of real analysis, you will find that. Of course, this will be valid in a neighborhood of 0, 0. or in a disk containing 0, 0, but as we observed this is going to end after some time. The C it is not a series, it is going to be a polynomial. So, there is no problem about validity, it will be valid everywhere. So, we cannot hold of a polynomial expression for u, x, u of x y. We have to show that this u is indeed Laplace in u equal to 0 and u equal to p on the unit circle. We are not applying any uh, uniqueness theorems. If we had uniqueness to this problem, the, to the given problem, we can straight away say that the u we got is answer. So, the trouble lies there. I am going to explain this later. So, let us call the polynomial that we got. in the previous slide as q of x y using the real analyticity of the function u. So, now q satisfies Laplace and q equal to 0 in the unit ball and q of x y equal to p x y for all x y such that x square plus y square equal to 1. The question is why this is what we would like to say, but is this true? 1 seems to be ok because 1 means this ok. This seems to be ok because q is actually a representation of the u and we know Laplace in u equal to 0 therefore Laplace in q is 0. But why is this true q x y equal p x y? No idea. It looks like the proof is going to break down here. So, we go for another approach, approach 2. Let us look at a, a simple case. Suppose that the given p of x y okay, is such that Laplacian p equal to 0 that means p itself is a harmonic polynomial. Then what happens u of x y is equal to p of x y in the unit disk because Laplacian of u minus p equal to 0 in the unit disk and u minus p equal to 0 on the circle. Therefore, by strong maximum principle we get u minus p equal to identically equal to 0. So, in other words u is identically equal to p in particular u is a polynomial done. So, trouble is that this p which is given may not be harmonic polynomial then what to do in that case. Just notice some interesting thing here which is if u x y equal to p x y on the unit circle then u x y equal to p x y plus 1 minus x square minus y square into L of x y for any polynomial L 
that is because 1 minus x square minus y square is 0 on S01. So, this will happen on S01. Therefore, we ask can we supply something from here into this so that we get a harmonic polynomial here and uh, something here. Let me write L tilde for, mo for the moment. So, in other words we want to write whether P of x y can be expressed like this where h is harmonic and you have addition of this which is vanishing on S01. So, suppose we are able to write P of x y equal to h of x y plus 1 minus x square minus y square into L of x y, where h and L are polynomials of course polynomials and Laplace in h is 0. That is h is a harmonic polynomial in B01 let us put for a polynomial it does not matter once Laplace in h is 0, Laplace in h is 0 everywhere. And U of x y equal to P of x y on S01. Therefore, by strong maximum principle we get u identical equal to h. So, this follows from the observation that we made on the previous slide when the given p were harmonic polynomial then we concluded that u is identical equal to p. Now, here I will treat this as the given polynomial h and u equal to h on the this is actually equal to h right u equal to h on the unit circle then h is the solution by strong maximum principle. So, u in particular is a polynomial in B01. So, the question now is how do I catch hold of H and L? As on the last slide, that is P equal to H plus 1 minus x square minus y square into L that H and L how do I get? Of course, if you get a L you have the H. So, let degree of P in fact it is given to us equal to K. So, it is enough to find L such that Laplacian of P is equal to Laplacian of 1 minus x square minus y square into L of x y and degree of L is k minus 2 because I want to write P is equal to h plus 1 minus x square minus y square into L. So, this is already a degree 2 polynomial. So, L is degree k minus 2 because p is given to be degree k. So, this is a natural condition we get because I want Laplace in h equal to 0 that is if and only if Laplace in of p is equal to Laplace in of this quantity that is what I have written here. Thus, we are interested in solving this equation. Here notice the right hand side is known p is given polynomial. So, this is known. So, we want to solve this now it looks like a equally difficult problem. Luckily it is not that difficult because we are only looking for L which is polynomial of degree less than or equal to k minus 2 that really helps us because if you are looking at only polynomials degree less than or equal to k minus 2 it forms a vector space of finite dimension. 
that makes our job easy as we are going to see on the next slide. So, define T it is a mapping from polynomials of degree less than or equal to k minus 2 to same space polynomials of degree less than or equal to k minus 2. What is the oper operator? It takes a function polynomial h of x y to this multiply with this 1 minus x square minus y square then you get a polynomial of degree less than or equal to k and then take Laplace, Laplacian of that. So, that will be a polynomial. So, this operator is well defined, it is a linear operator and this is a finite dimensional vector space. Therefore, what we know is t is 1 to 1 if and only if t is on to. What we are interested in is the t is on to because if t is on to I can find an h such that this quantity is equal to Laplacian p because p is of degree k Laplacian p will be of degree less than or equal to k minus 2. That is how I get this h which I will call it as L. Once I have L I have my capital H. Therefore, we will show that t is 1 to 1 it is easier to show t is 1 to 1. So, suppose that Laplacian of 1 minus x square minus y square into h of x y is 0 in B 0 1. Okay, in other words, what I am going to show that the kernel of T consists of only the 0 element. So, I assume that h belongs to the kernel of T that means this equation is satisfied everywhere, but I have written in B01 because I have plans to apply some maximum principles. Okay. H has this property that means this is the function I am looking at let me call it as V. So, V is a harmonic function in 01, B01 and what is its value on S01? It is 0 on S01 because on S01 x square plus y square equal to 1 therefore, V is 0. Now, the maximum principle tells me that V has to be identically equal to 0. That means, 1 minus x square minus y square into h x y is the 0 polynomial or 0 function or the 0 polynomial that implies that h of x y is the 0 polynomial. So, we have shown that t is 1 to 1 therefore, t is 1 1 and that implies t is on to. Therefore, there exists L of x y polynomial of degree less than or equal to k minus 2 such that Laplacian of 1 minus x square minus y square into L of x y minus p of x y is 0. So, define or call h of x y equal to this p of x y minus 1 minus x square minus y square into L x y. Now, what can we say about h? h is a polynomial Laplace in h is 0 of course, in particular in B 0 1 and h of x y equal to p of x y on s of 0 1 that is for x y such that x square plus y square equal to 1. Therefore, by strong maximum principle or the uniqueness 
or uniqueness of solutions to Dirichlet boundary value problem. We get that u of x y equal to h of x y on p 0 1. A natural question because we are dealing with polynomials is u of x y equal to h of x y for all x y in R 2. We have only shown the equality on B01 because we apply strong maximum principle on the domain D01 on the disk of radius 1. Answer is yes because u equal to h on the disk of radius 1 center origin already this we already showed. We will not prove this. A more general fact is that if u and v are real analytic, on R2 and distinct then look at the set x in R2 such that u of x equal to v of x. This set has measure 0 is more general. So, we already have seen that this set in our on our example or in our problem this set contains the disk of radius 1 already which is non-zero measure. Therefore, we can apply this and also say that u equal to h in R2 itself. Thank you.